Hey everyone, in this video, I'll show you how to make saving tools. The first thing we'll do is break down the problem. We'll be responding to two events. The first is when a player joins the game, and the second is when a player leaves the game. When a player joins, we need to load their data. From the player's data, we can give them their tools. When a player leaves the game, we need to get all of their tools. And once we have all their tools, we can save them. Let's get some tools from the toolbox. The way we'll save the player's tools is by storing each tool's name in a data store. This is because we can't save objects to a data store. So for every tool in our game, we'll make a copy of it in the server storage. So create a folder called tools. And then copy each tool into the folder. Because we're identifying each tool by their name, each tool must have a unique name. Now create a script in the server script service. We'll start by getting the player's tools. So create a function called getTools. This will receive one parameter, which is the player to get the tools from. We'll create a list to store each tool name. The first place we'll look for tools is the player's backpack. This is where all the player's unequipped tools are stored. We'll loop over each tool in the backpack. For each tool, we'll add the tool name to the list. The second place we can find tools is inside the player's character. Unlike what we've done to get the backpack tools, we can't directly access the character. This is because we'll be running this function whenever a player leaves. When a player is leaving, their character will already be deleted. This means any equipped tools will also be deleted. So we have to create a function to track the player's equipped tool. This will receive one parameter, which is the player. We'll use a string value to track the equipped tool. So when the player equips a tool, we'll set the value equal to the name of the tool. And when they unequip the tool, we'll make the string value empty. First, we'll look inside the player to see if the string value already exists. Let's create a separate variable for the name of the string value. If the value doesn't exist, it means we're calling this function when the player has just joined. So we'll need to create a new string value. We'll then set its name to the variable we just created. And finally, we'll parent it to the player. Next, we'll get the player's character. We'll create a function called update equipped tool. We'll run this function to update the string value. So we'll first check if the player has a tool equipped. The find first child of class method will search through the character and look for the first child that is a tool. If the function couldn't find a tool, nothing will be returned. This will mean the player doesn't have a tool equipped. So if the player does have an equipped tool, we'll update the string value to the name of the tool. And if they don't have a tool, we'll make the string value empty. We'll be calling this function in response to two events. We'll use the child added event which fires whenever an object is inserted into the character. 
The second is the child removed event. This fires whenever an object is moved out of the character. We'll call this function when a player joins the game. So let's create a function for when the player does join the game. This function will receive one parameter, which is the player who joined. We'll then use the character added event of the player. This event fires whenever the player's character spawns in. When this event fires, we'll call the track equipped tool function. We'll give the player to this function. We're using the character added event so that we can keep track of the player's tools after they die and respawn. This is because when a player respawns, they'll have a different character. The player joined function will be called when the player added event fires. This is the first event we described at the start of this video, which will fire whenever a player joins the game. We can run the game to test that the string value works. Open up the player and you should see a string value. Right now it's empty, but let's see what happens when we equip a tool. The value has changed to the name of our tool. If we unequip the tool, the value will be empty again. And if we equip a second tool, the value is updated correctly. Switching between tools will also change the value correctly. Let's also make sure the value works after we respawn. The value is empty because our tools were deleted when we died. And we can equip a tool again to see the value change correctly. Back in the getTools function, we'll get whatever is stored inside the string value. We'll make sure the value isn't empty, meaning the player did have a tool equipped before they left. We'll then add the value to the list. And finally, we'll return this list. Now we can call this function whenever a player leaves. We'll create another function to handle when a player leaves. We'll get one parameter, which is the player who is leaving. We'll first get the player's tools. For now, we can just print their tools. We'll run this function in response to the player removing event. This is the second event we saw at the start of this video. Now we can run the game. Let's pick up some tools. So we have the laser gun equipped and we have the sword in our backpack. We can see a list has been printed. The list contains both tools which we had before leaving. Once we get the player's tools, we need to save them to the data store. So we'll first get the data store service. We'll then get the data store for our game. We can call this anything we want. For this video, I'll go with saved tools. We'll then create a function to save the tools. The first parameter is the user ID of the player. The second parameter is the list of all their tool names. When we're accessing a specific area of the data store, we need a key. And since this area of the data store is for the player, we need to make it unique for each player. So the key must contain the user ID. We'll make a separate function to create a key. This function will receive the user ID and it will return the key. In this case, our key is the user ID with some text added to the end. Back in the set data function, we can call the construct data store key function. 
We'll then use the setAsync method of the data store. We'll give two arguments. The first is the key, and the second is the data. This will overwrite any data stored at that key. When we're handling data stores, we don't want anything to go wrong because it means a player could lose their data. If something does go wrong, we need a way to retry saving their data. So we'll wrap our code inside a pcall function. pcall or protected call is a way to prevent errors from breaking the rest of the code. We'll put the pcall function inside a while loop. So the pcall function will stop any errors from breaking the while loop. Before the while loop, we'll create two variables. The first is success. Success will tell us if everything went fine. And the second is result. If something did go wrong, result will tell us the reason for the error. So we'll want the while loop to stop once success is true, because this means we successfully saved the player's data. We'll make success and result equal to whatever the pcall function returns. In this case, the error message will be provided by the setAsync function. If something does go wrong, meaning success is false, we should print some kind of message. Rather than print, we'll use warn, which will output our text in yellow. Now we can call this function when a player leaves the game. We'll remove the print statement and replace it with the setData function. We'll give the function the player's user ID and the names of all their tools. Right now we're using the player removing event to save data, but if the server shuts down for some reason, the player removing event might not fire. To handle this, we'll use the bind to close method. This will run the function we give it when the server shuts down. So we'll create a function to handle when the server shuts down. In this function, we'll go through every single player still in the server. For each player, we'll call the player left function. We don't want this function to run if we're testing the game in Roblox Studio, because we don't want to create unnecessary data store requests. We'll give this function to the bind to close method. Right now, we can't test if the setData function works. We'll only know if it works once we load the player's data. So we'll create a function called getData. This function will only receive the user ID. We can copy the code from the setData function. Instead of setAsync, we'll be using getAsync. Get async will read from the data store, so we only need to give a key. If everything went fine, result will contain the data stored at that key. Let's change the error message to something more suitable. At the end of this function, we'll return result, which will be the player's data. Now when a player joins the game, we can load their data. For now, let's just print the player's data. Before we can run the game, we need to head over to the game settings. In security, enable studio access to API services. This allows us to access data stores inside Roblox Studio. Now let's run the game. You can see that something has already been printed. Since we don't have any data stored yet, nil was printed. Let's pick up some tools. We have the sword and the laser gun. Let's leave the game and rejoin. We can see a list has been printed. Inside are the names of the tools we left with.
now that we've loaded the player's data, the next thing we need to do is give them their tools. Let's create a function called give tools. This function will receive the player and their data. If the player doesn't have any data saved, meaning they're playing for the first time, we don't want to do anything. Now we can loop through each tool name inside their data. For each tool name, we'll look inside the tools folder we created at the start. So let's create a variable accessing the folder. We'll then look for a matching tool. Then we'll make sure the tool exists. If the tool doesn't exist, we'll print an error message. This could happen if you forgot to put a tool inside the tools folder. If the tool does exist, we'll make a copy of it and parent it to the player's backpack. Now we can call this function whenever a player joins. We can remove this print statement. We'll give the function the player and the data. Now let's test the game. Let's equip a tool and leave the game. Play the game again. You'll notice that we don't have the tool. The tool is being saved and loaded correctly. The issue is with how we give the tools. Right now we're giving the tools as soon as the player joins. The issue with this is that if the player's character hasn't spawned in yet, the tools we give them will be deleted. Whenever the player's character spawns in, their backpack is cleared. So we first have to check if the character hasn't spawned in yet. If it hasn't spawned in, we'll have to wait for it to spawn in using the character added event. And once their character has spawned in, their tools will be given to them. Now we can try running the game again. Let's pick up some tools. Let's leave the game and rejoin. We now have the tools we left with. We can pick up some more tools. We have two laser guns, one tommy gun, and one sword. Let's leave the game. We'll rejoin the game. And we have all our tools. If this video helped you, please consider subscribing and liking the video. You can also comment any ideas you want me to make. In the description, you'll find a link to the Discord server where you can also send your ideas. Thank you for watching the video and have a wonderful day.